Good morning and welcome to the Department of the Army Presidential Rank Award Ceremony. Our host for today's ceremony is the Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Christine E. Warmouth. Please stand for the singing of the National Anthem by Staff Sergeant Caitlin Withers from the United States Army Band Pershing Zone and the Invocation, delivered by Chaplain Colonel Tim Ryu. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets redly the bombs bursting in air through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Would you join me as I offer this prayer? Almighty and gracious God, I invite your holy presence as we begin this presidential rank award ceremony. I thank you for the senior executives and senior professionals who are receiving this prestigious recognition for their results-oriented and exemplary achievements. And perhaps just as importantly, I thank you for their subordinates, colleagues, supervisors, and mentors who have invested in them with support, encouragement, and counsel over the years. Lord of the universe, I thank you for instilling in our senior civilian leaders a tenacious drive for excellence and an increasing desire for deeper understanding of our shared humanity across all ranks and walks of life. Continue to grow them and use them, not only for getting the job done, but also for empowering and unleashing the Army's next generation of leaders. Give each of them extra portions of patience, wisdom, and compassion. Loving Father, I pray you would protect and guide the family and loved ones of our leaders in their continuing support and partnership. Help them together to use their bonus wisely. Now, as you bless the wedding in Cana, bless this occasion with an atmosphere of celebration, joy, and gratitude. In the name of the giver of the ultimate and eternal reward, I pray, amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Warmouth. Good morning, everybody. So I'm not sure I can uh, top that little bit of chaplain wit there. <laughs> that was great. Uh, it is such a pleasure to be uh, here today with everyone to recognize these great career civilians for their leadership and accomplishments over the past year. Thank you all for joining us. I know some of you have traveled uh, quite a long ways to be here. We have great representation from across the country. Alabama, Michigan, Oregon, Mississippi, and of course closer to home here in Maryland and Virginia. To all of the friends, family, and sponsors, welcome to the Pentagon. Thank you all so much for the support you've given to the outstanding individuals that we're recognizing here today. Last year was the first time we were able to host the Presidential Rank Awards in person after a long pause due to the pandemic. So I'm glad uh, that once again this year, we're going to have the opportunity to properly recognize the leadership and achievement of our career Army civilians. Our civilian workforce is a critical part of the Army. At all levels of the Army, 
Our civilians keep this organization running, and they provide expertise, experience, and leadership. Sometimes they're highly visible, sometimes they're more behind the scenes, but they are always a key part of the Army team. The recipients that we're honoring here today epitomize that lifetime of service. As members of the senior executive service and senior professionals, they are at the top of their field, providing leadership and direction at the highest levels of the commands at which they work and making invaluable contributions to the technical and scientific advancement of the Army. I have a special appreciation for the role that career civilians play within our nation's defense. I served here in the Pentagon as a career civilian for almost seven years at the beginning of my career. And as a result, I'd like to think that I uh, have a particular understanding of the importance of our Army civilians, the expertise and the continuity that they bring. I know the challenges associated with adapting to new senior leaders every few years, sometimes even a little bit more than every few years, and I know the challenges of working in a complex workforce comprised of uniformed personnel, political appointees, civilians, and contractors. Life as a DA civilian isn't always easy, but our civilians are so often the bedrock of our organizations. From my first days in government as an OSD Presidential Management Fellow to my role today as Secretary of the Army, I have long relied on the experience, advice, and leadership of career civilians. The work I've seen our career civilians do since my earliest days in the department continues to inspire me and challenge me and leads me to have great expectations of the career civilians we have here in the Department of the Army. And all of you that we are recognizing here this morning are raising the bar to new heights each and every day. Your contributions to the Army and to our nation's defense have been tremendous. For all of you who may not know, the Presidential Rank Award is a very selective and exclusive award. Not only is the number of awards limited to a very small percentage of candidates by law, but all nominees are intensely scrutinized by an independent board of leaders from within the government and the private sector. And the parameters of this review focus on sustained accomplishment over a career, not just a single contribution. So each of the recipients that you see here today have committed themselves to a lifetime of service to our country and to our army. And their impact has been tremendous. The people that we're honoring here today have strengthened our country's infrastructure, building our plans to repair our nation's ports and waterways, maintaining our dams, and modernizing our hydroelectric power plants. They've developed new approaches to identifying toxic chemicals in our water, new methods of airfield and port repair, and even led the efforts to produce and distribute the COVID-19 vaccines as part of Operation Warp Speed. And you know, the pandemic has been, uh, it's been in the rearview window for a few years now. It almost, for, for me at least, it's hard to remember what it was like. But I think we should not forget how much of a game changer that vaccine was for our entire country. Um, my mom has a very serious autoimmune disorder and uh, I was, my sister and I were terrified, frankly, um, for her health and safety before that vaccine became available. So. I am particularly proud of the contributions that the United States Army made as part of Operation Warp Speed. So, you can see the impact of the work of our career civilians touches our Army and our soldiers and the broader population in very direct ways. Because of these individuals, we have a stronger information network, cutting edge microelectronics, state of the art missile systems, and advanced armor and ground combat systems. As leaders, these individuals are heavily invested in managing our very large organization, planning the Army's budget, executing our contract actions, ensuring our readiness, and increasing our combat effectiveness. All of this contributes in very important ways to the Army's ability to defend the nation. Their work fuels our transformation as the Army responds to new threats all around the globe. 
Their work gives our soldiers the technical overmatch that we need against our adversaries at a time when technology is evolving at an unprecedented rate. And their leadership and insight guide the decisions that set the Army on the course for the future, ensuring that we are ready to meet the challenges that lie ahead. So for all of these accomplishments, I thank each and every one of you. Thank you for your continued dedication and service to the Army, to the men and women who serve in uniform, and the nation that we will all continue to defend. Your contributions are more important now than ever before because the world is more dangerous now than ever before. And as a result, the Army cannot afford to slow down its transformation. We must continue to push the envelope to develop new weapon systems, new methods of protection from evolving threats, new advances in science and technology, and new partnerships with industry to support our warfighting capabilities. And we must organize and manage our resources to support this transformation or risk slowing our progress. You all have been a critical part of this transformation, and I'm honored to rely on you and our Army senior leaders in uniform as we continue to keep the United States Army the world's greatest land fighting force. Thank you all for your incredible service to our nation and to our Army, and congratulations for earning these prestigious and very well-deserved awards. And I agree with the chaplain. Think carefully about how you're going to use those great bonuses, but have some fun. Thank you so much, and congratulations. The Presidential Rank Award is only presented to executives and defense intelligence executives in government who have made a significant difference and whose level of professional excellence helps the president in translating his mandate into successful federal programs. There are two levels of the Presidential Rank Award, distinguished and meritorious. Today, we are recognizing recipients of the Distinguished Executive Rank Award, which is the highest honor followed by the Meritorious Executive Rank Award and Meritorious Senior Professional Rank Award. Each recipient in today's ceremony will be accompanied by their command sponsor as they receive their award from the Secretary of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated throughout the presentations. Three Army Senior Executive Service members were awarded the rank of Distinguished Executive for fiscal year 2023. The citation reads, the President of the United States of America has conferred the rank of Distinguished Executive in the Senior Executive Service for sustained extraordinary accomplishment in management of programs of the United States government and for leadership, exemplifying the highest standards of service to the public reflecting credit on the career civil service. Mr. Edward E. Belk, Jr., Director of Civil Works, Directorate of Civil Works, United States Army, Corps of Engineers, Washington, D.C. Mr. Belk organized and led an expeditionary regional COVID facility response initiative across nine states that rapidly assessed 147 disparate sites and quickly designed and delivered alternate care facilities and non-traditional vacant facilities such as hotels, arenas, and prisons that surged 1,169 additional critical care beds with most sites completed and available for patients within two weeks of construction contract award. Mr. Belk is receiving his award with his sponsor, Lieutenant General Scott A. Spellman, Commanding General of your United States Army Corps of Engineers. Mr. Michael Ramsey retired, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army, Financial Operations and Information, Office of the Assistant Secretary of the Army, Financial Management and Comptroller, Washington, D.C. Known as a thoughtful leader and trusted colleague, Mr. Ramsey is the first executive to serve as the senior civilian in all the Deputy Assistant Secretary positions within Financial Management and Comptroller, with responsibilities that included procurement and research and development budgeting, cost and economics, working capital funds and budgeting. 
Mr. Ramsey is receiving his award with his sponsor, Mr. Robert Cook, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller. Mr. Brian R. Sampson, posthumous. Deputy to the Commanding General, United States Army Contracting Command, United States Army Materiel Command, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Mr. Sampson facilitated the urgently required response to the COVID pandemic, which using creative and innovative contract vehicles procured over $90 billion of the vaccines, therapeutics, and enabling needles, syringes, and test kits. He prided himself on investing in his talented workforce and delivering people, readiness, and modernization results to the Army. Accepting the award is Mr. Sampson's spouse, Mrs. Connie Fox Sampson, along with his daughters, Dr. Chelsea Sampson and Miss Abigail Sampson. The sponsor is Lieutenant General Heidi Hoyle, Deputy Chief of Staff, G4. Eight Army Senior Executive Service members were awarded the rank of Meritorious Executive for fiscal year 2023. The citation reads, the President of the United States of America has conferred the rank of Meritorious Executive in the Senior Executive Service for sustained superior accomplishment in management of programs of the United States government and for noteworthy achievement of quality and efficiency in the public service. Mr. Daniel J. Gallagher, Deputy to the Commanding General, United States Army Contracting Command, United States Army Materiel Command, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Mr. Gallagher directed more than 750 civilian and military personnel located at seven geographic sites and led the Army Contracting Command in annually executing over 15,000 contracting actions, totaling $10 billion in obligations. Mr. Gallagher is receiving his award with his sponsor, General Hoyle. <laughs> Ms. Marion G. Wicker, Executive Deputy to the Commanding General, United States Army Materiel Command, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Ms. Wicker was instrumental to the success of the nation's COVID-19 vaccination program that developed and distributed more than 300 million doses of three different vaccines and as executive deputy to the Army Materiel Command Commanding General, developed the Army's Organic Industrial Base Modernization Plan, which supports the Army's largest transformation in over 40 years. Ms. Wicker is receiving her award with her sponsor, General Hoyle. Mr. Brian D. Butler, Deputy to the Commander, United States Army Tank Automotive and Armaments Command. Mr. Butler is unable to attend today's ceremony. Lieutenant General Heidi Hoyle is accepting the award on his behalf. Ms. Francis E. Coffey, Division Program Director, Northwestern Division, United States Army Corps of Engineers, Portland, Oregon. Ms. Coffey ensured that the 27 core multi-purpose dams all over 50 years old delivered on all congressionally authorized purposes within the Columbia River system. Additionally, she led a strategic initiative to increase operation and maintenance efficiencies, as well as asset investment planning for the modernization of hydropower infrastructure. Ms. Coffey is receiving her award with her sponsor, General Spellman.
Mr. Bartley P. Durst retired, director of the Geotechnical and Structures Laboratory, United States Army Engineer Research and Development Center, United States Army Corps of Engineers, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Mr. Durst led development of expedient airfield damage repair systems to bring damaged and austere airfields up to levels for United States aircraft operations. Additionally, he led the development of rapid port repair systems to facilitate peer assessment and repair that are fielded in the United States Indo-Pacific Command, dramatically increasing force projection capabilities for the joint force. Mr. Durst is receiving his award with his sponsor, General Spellman. Mr. William T. Lasher, Deputy Chief of Staff, G6, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, Fort Eustis, Virginia. A leader in the Army's transition to cloud capabilities, Mr. Lasher significantly improved information technology and network support, which allowed for the expansion of virtual training and education for Army soldiers and civilians. Mr. Lasher is receiving his award with his sponsor, General Gary Brito, Commanding General, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command. <laughs> Mr. William J. Kuhn, Director, Civilian Personnel Labor and Employment Law, Employment Law Division, Office of the Judge Advocate General, Washington, D.C. Mr. Kuhn is unable to attend today's ceremony. Lieutenant General Joseph Berger, the Judge Advocate General, is accepting the award on Mr. Kuhn's behalf. Mr. Jeffrey Langout retired, Director, DEVCOM Aviation and Missile Center, United States Army Combat Capabilities Development Command, United States Army Futures Command, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. In addition to being an expert in Army aviation airworthiness and safety, Mr. Langout led major transformative Army efforts to include integrating autonomous and teleoperated ground robots with operational soldiers and delivering a state-of-the-art Precision Strike Missile Seeker. Mr. Langout is receiving his award with his sponsor, Mr. Joseph Welch, Acting Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Futures Command. Three Army Senior Professionals were awarded the rank of Meritorious Senior Professional for fiscal year 2023. The citation reads, the President of the United States of America has conferred the rank of Meritorious Senior Professional for sustained superior accomplishment in the conduct of programs of the United States government and noteworthy achievement of quality and efficiency in public service. Dr. Donna M. Joyce, Senior Research Scientist, Protective Technologies, DEVCOM Aviation and Missile Center, United States Army Combat Capabilities Command, United States Army Futures Command, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. A visionary technical leader, Dr. Joyce is the Army and DOD's foremost subject matter expert in microelectronic security and is responsible for identifying high risk exploitation threats to microelectronics packaging and mitigating those risks through secure packaging methods. Dr. Joyce is receiving her award with her sponsor, Mr. Welch. Dr. Scott E. Schoenfeld, Senior Research Scientist, Terminal Ballistics, DEVCOM Army Research Lab, United States Army Combat Capabilities Development Command, United States Army Futures Command, Aberdeen Proving Grounds, Maryland.
Through his research, Dr. Schoenfeld has defined connectedness of terminal ballistics and has ensured that unprecedented armor and weapon concepts will be available to support critical army decisions for manned and unmanned combat platforms well into the next half century. Dr. Schoenfeld is receiving his award with his sponsor, Mr. Welch. Dr. Edward J. Perkins, Senior Research Scientist, Environmental Networks and Genetic Toxicology. United States Army Engineer Research and Development Center, United States Army Corps of Engineers, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Dr. Perkins is a premier expert in the field of toxicology. His applied and basic research has resulted in the creation of risk analysis tools for forever chemicals known as PFAs, new computational and genetic approaches to predict toxic effects on animals and humans, and the use of biotechnology to purify rare earth element critical minerals in magnets. Dr. Perkins is receiving his award with his sponsor, General Spellman. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in a round of applause as the award recipients join Secretary Warmoth on stage for a group photo for all of the 2023 Presidential Rank Award winners. Thank you, Secretary Wormuth and award recipients. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in singing the Army song led by Sergeant Withers. The word can be found inside the back cover page of the program. March along, sing our song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done fighting till the battle's won and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. You are invited to a reception outside the auditorium. 
Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.